Um, got it. Okay. Uh, can you please share with us what mistakes did you make when you started? That's probably the most interesting those, question. Those everybody most wants interesting. To, yeah, everybody wants to avoid them. So what were your mistakes? Or maybe learnings doesn't matter how we call them. So what would you do differently if you knew that days what you know nowadays? Yeah. yeah. Uh, first of all, I would go niche from the first day, from day one. So I would choose one industry and go into it. If it's, it uh, won't work, just switch to another one. But our main mistake that uh, was that we been creating a mass market product. And due to this mistake, uh, we couldn't really <coughs> please everyone. So we had our product who had some part for e-commerce, it was some integrations for e-commerce, but which were not enough for e-commerce companies to sign up. Uh, we partially did some features for SaaS companies, uh, but big SaaS com came to us and uh, asked, do you have a segment integration or I don't know, Stitch, we didn't have it and so on. And that was probably the <clears throat> most important mistake uh, we made. And um, what else? You should always interview more customers or potential customers because there is not really such a thing as uh, I do too much interviews. <laughs> That's uh, you better over interview than uh, just keep uh, improvising or doing whatever you think is good for, for, for the product or for the business. Instead, you should work with customers, ideal customers from your niche and uh, see how they uh, how they analyze it and yeah i really had some some great insights when i went into our uh, some of our customers offices and uh, uh, checking how they they are using our product uh, we we have a product like Ma like um, hojar which is mouse flow and mm -hmm. we we check how our, our customers are uh, are, are using the product. Still, there is a lot of uh, hypothesis. You cannot really know why they do it. You you just, uh, you have some hypothesis, but they might be wrong. So, But when you see uh, that uh, your user is doing something, you can ask him, why are you doing that? Uh, that that's much more valuable for you uh, because you, you, you see what is wrong in your uh, onboarding, in your activation, in your uh, usability part. Uh, and you could you can uh, improve it so that's probably one of the most important uh, uh, things an entrepreneur should do talk to his customers mm -hmm. perfect i planning to niche down nowadays with retently i mean to even to narrow your focus nowadays and go in towards one particular niche or what are your strategic goals with your product yeah, we, we would, uh, that, that's the, the, the goal. We would uh, further niche into e-commerce, into uh, financial and healthcare, and then uh, work more on uh, features which are more relevant for mid-market or even enterprise uh, companies, uh, uh, security features and uh, stuff, uh, which doesn't really bother companies paying you like, I don't know, even $100 a month. That's uh, SMB instead work on for, for, for companies who are able to to benefit most of your product uh, yeah i had a i had a discussion with grigori before and uh, he actually gave me a very good tip which is like uh, during corona times the clients who do not value your product they will leave and my question to grigori would be what changes how did the corona time uh, influence your company your startup did you have any you know insights or you know how did it influence your company? Yeah, we seen about uh, for the past uh, by starting mid March and April, we lost about fifteen percent of our customers. That's huge, I think. Okay. Uh, that's not uh, like there are customers or companies suffering even more, like Airbnb or uh, companies in the travel industry. Uh, that's but these were uh, dormant customers, people who were not really uh, into it or using it much. Uh, they were more of uh, people who signed, signed up at some point, but uh, haven't used it a lot. So I think everyone, every company has it. 
uh, we still tried to offer uh, to some of them like to pause their plans to get them uh, i don't know discounts for three to six months uh, it worked with some some uh, still decided to leave uh, the good part was that uh, there are companies like pendo uh, you know they've yeah. got uh, the analytics, right? for product analytics also nps so we've got customers cutting costs and moving to us from pendo where they spend about two thousand dollars they get into retent and paid like 10 times less like 300 dollars a month so that's uh, important mm -hmm. like there are did benefits. you create any yeah did you create any kind of anti-crisis offer for your customers oh, for people who cannot really afford it we propose them discounts uh, i don't know uh, even 50 percent discounts for up to three to six months everything was done on an individual case like we didn't have a, a dedicated page or like everything was treated uh, on a case uh, case to case guys we have a question from a from a person facebook user it says grigory really nice to learn from you i do have a question what is your client retention rate uh, like after a person is interested in your product, how much time they will stay with you? Yeah, it uh, it really depends on uh, what type of the customer is. For solopreneurs or small companies, they will probably send a survey and leave after that. Uh, that's uh, that's again a, a reason we will prefer to to stick into industries. Uh, who do this process on a, a continuous base, not just a one time and then leave, because still we invest uh, time and effort into onboarding every customer uh, and uh, it hurts us probably. Uh, at some point in um, like before this COVID uh, issue, we only had yearly plans. It was cheaper comparing to our competitors, but uh, we only sold early plans at, and uh, it stopped some people from signing up, but that was fine because uh, uh, we uh, had some cash flow when customers signed up and then they were they had more skin in the game. Uh, like, and we had more time to show them value uh, in our product uh, during that year. Right now, uh, we got back to uh, also added monthly plans. Uh, like for for the past two or three weeks since since uh, since uh, the pandemic, but once it ends or it gets better, we'll probably again switch back to the early only plans. So the, to answer directly the question, the retention rate is low for uh, solopreneurs and SMB, but it's uh, it uh, uh, it goes up with. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the company size so a company uh, with starting from 50 uh, people they will definitely uh, be your client and stay with you further and that's probably is happening with uh most of SaaS companies because you know if you're targeting mid-size and enterprise you might have a longer sales cycle but at the same time it would be much more complicated for this customer to switch to another product because they have already all the integrations with the enterprise software with the tech environment etc so that's yeah. why that's why mass market is still great because you can you know you can get initial traction for your product but then you need to go hire to acquire bigger customers that can uh, generate more revenue for you and you'll be able to develop your product um, we have also a question we always ask uh, in the end of our podcast what is your favorite book uh, that impacted you personally or your business that you can highly recommend and it would be great if you'll share also uh, like the biggest impacts or the biggest learnings the core learnings from that book it's not the bible okay <laughs> <laughs> actually yeah it's a bible it's a bible for uh, entrepreneurs 
Uh, that's probably the the best book I the best author I ever uh, read. He actually has two books in this matter. So his first book, uh, the author is uh, Steve Blank, and his first book, uh, who was launched like ten years, twelve years ago, I don't know, but it, yeah. it's awesome. Uh, it's the four steps to epiphany, and then yeah. in a few years he re uh, wrote it uh, together with someone else, and the book name is. Uh, uh, the Startups Owner uh, Manual. So that's an awesome book. So uh, that's probably the Bible for entrepreneurs. It covers um, the whole customer discovery, customer validation, how you do enterprise, uh, regular uh, sales. It's an awesome book. Cool. cool. Thank you so much. Uh, you. Yeah, it was really interesting conversation. Um, well, lots of insights. Uh, for me personally, I was really interested. Uh, how did you how did you, did you launch a product in a very competitive market? So, yeah, that's really insightful and great story. And uh, I wish that you mentioned at the beginning that uh, you had more failures than uh, successful uh, and business entities or successful business ventures. I hope this would be just the beginning <laughs> for your new empire. So yeah, thank you. Cross, that you will rock with it. Thank you so much for joining us today, and all the links. Have uh, a great day. Yeah, just mentioned. Uh, just want to mention uh, uh, for our listeners that all the links we mentioned during this chat will be available uh, in the podcast description, so you can visit all the resources. Uh, okay, guys. So see you in the next episode. Cheers. See you, cheers. Bye-bye. Uh, hello. And they tut? Da. Uh, we are live still. You need to. And broadcast. Okay.